Hey everybody, Brian Lovering here. So I want to go into what is my purpose with this business. It's all about creating as much change as absolutely possible. So when we have the opportunity to speak or speak into businesses or to speak to business owners, it's not just about the widgets that we sell, it's about the relationship that we build with the people that we're selling to. So how do we build that relationship? The, the nuggets that I got today from Pete's platform tour are absolutely amazing. And maintaining congruency with those models is absolutely important. And now, how do I maintain congruency? See, I come from studying faith. I st study and apply it. And for me, it becomes fact. What I know is fact. I know these things work, I know faith is real, and I know that there are things in this world that people don't otherwise get to understand. Now, how do I convey that understanding in a way that doesn't scare people? How do I convey that understanding in a way that applies it to being the very best that it could be? For me, that's learning how to communicate, that's learning how to speak. For you, it might be learning your product so good that you can do it in your sleep if you have to. That's step one. Step two is figure out who can you share it with that will help you do the things that you cannot. So if you don't know how to speak, how can you get your thing to serve somebody else who can speak, okay? And then how do you get them to get your training and sell it back to you and sell it to a bunch of other people in a way that provides them what they need in the time that they need it, but at the same time being able to provide you with what you need when you need it so that you have opportunities that are otherwise outside your reach based on lack of money, lack of funds, lack of time, lack, lack of experience. It's all about <clears throat> excuse me, leveraging the network. And so to leverage a network, to leverage your ability to produce content, to leverage your capacity of understanding of what you do, you need to be able to have the courage in order to do that. Now, what does that look like? For me, it started with an email, one email to a publisher with a really shitty manuscript that I have to rewrite again. Now, what that does is it is the demonstration of the attempt. Now, with mentorship, it's not about being perfect. It's about being willing to try. So when you're starting off and you need to get clients, you need to be willing to try with people. That's your first step. The second thing is you need to do what they say, or you need to try to do it what they say. And if for some reason it doesn't work, you need to take the time to draft out an email or draft out a video that will give them exactly what they need to say it better so that you can understand it and you can provide them the means and techniques in order to do that. So in this case, I've posted this into several of my groups, but it's also the same concept that I've had that's congruent to my messaging of providing mentorship. And so I'll be able to cross post this into YouTube. So that way, hopefully people in YouTube will be able to understand that what widget they're selling is not as important as the relationship that they can cultivate with the person on the other side of that widget that will allow, allow them to have a relationship of trust and mentorship that leads through years, not just through that moment. And so the application of yourself or your thing in that moment, it's only as good as the time that it's in. Then it goes onto the shelf and it becomes a loss, right? Like the stuff that you've done, great, it's done, it's over. You got the money, you got the thing, you got the effect. Now you have to take it somewhere new. You have to put it in front of new people. How do you do that? Well, you have to get people involved in what you're doing. How do you get them involved in what you're doing? You have to send an email, you have to send copy, you have to send a reason for their engagement. And if you have a reason for their engagement, then you have a reason to cultivate their friendship. And if you have a reason to cultivate their friendship, maybe you can sell them something. But if you can't, then at least you're helping them do something that you cannot do or they cannot do in the time that they have you with them. So that way there is a total clarity and that there is total congruency back to what you're doing. So at the end of the day, everything all leads back into what you did initially in order to solve that conversation. So in this case, I wanted to work with men of faith. I like to talk to guys better than I like to talk to women because I understand the way the guys think. Guys have to repress things. They have to keep things hidden. They have to not be weak. They have to be strong always, right? That's a load of crap. 
nobody's strong always. You know, if you've ever seen any of my challenge videos, you know I'm a spongy mess when it comes to what I was trying to pull off in terms of what I needed to learn, what I still need to learn, and who I still need to learn from in order to be able to have the effect and the reach that I'm looking for. So being able to do that and understanding that there are things that I'm still growing in doesn't negate the fact that I'm still really, really good at doing the things that I've been good at all along. In this case, it's creating a mentorship struggle or mentorship journey to overcome the struggle of client learning, right? So I talked about a little bit the tier rating that I usually use. Tier one is the stuff that you're in the cycle of learning for. Tier two is you're selling something to somebody. Tier three is you're leading them through a mentorship journey. This can either take the form of teaching in a challenge, teaching in a free web video like this one, or it can take the form of actually teaching them in classes or in a paid environment where they're actually going to take notes and they're actually going to take lessons and they're going to carry those lessons forward so they have something that's more tangible and more deep so that you can still be of service even if you're not in the room. And that's the, that's the whole goal, is how do you get your thing to serve them when you're not in front of them? How do you get to benefit them when you're not around? How do you get to benefit the people that you'll never be around? These are the concepts that you have to understand about what you're doing, so that way you can speak to those things and you can understand that there's different levels that people are at. So when you structure your talks, you can talk to all three levels but you can talk to them simultaneously. So for the first half, you can talk to the people that are learning. The second half, you can talk to the people that are selling. And third, you can talk to the people that are leading other people through the journey. So that way they have a path that others can follow and you can sell it back to them. You can share it back with them and you can do a whole bunch of other things on top of that to either monetize your platform, monetize your product suite, monetize your client services and your mastermind groups like I love mastermind groups I love small groups of people 12 or less generally is what I get up to because in a small group of 12 those are different businesses that can learn to collaborate together I don't care what industry they're in there is a unifying thread they just have to be willing to adapt their messaging in such a way that they're not attached to what they're saying but they're attached to what they're doing and who they're serving so if you have a thing where you're building community, if you have a thing where you're building client relationships, if you have a thing which can help people in some capacity, you need to be able to figure out a way to structure yourself and your messaging so that it's adaptable, it's modifiable, so that it's congruent to who you are and what you represent, but you're not attached to what you're saying as much as what you're serving, right? Again, faith comes first. We serve what we are not, right? It doesn't matter if you believe in Allah, it doesn't matter if you believe in God, it doesn't matter if you follow the teachings of the Buddha, right? If you serve them and their ideals because that serves the community, that serves the relationships between the communities. And so by being able to develop the beyond bricks concept out as full as it can be, our business is not an island unto itself. Our business is but a link in a chain that goes far beyond what we're up to. So I hope that this is a good food for thought consideration on what you're doing as far as how you deliver it. The next is the levels of operation and engagement. Level one stuff, you're just doing it for free, you're doing it in your community groups. Level two, you've already made some sales, you're taking on some sales and clients. Level three, you've started to incorporate funnels or multiple avenues of money like books, uh, paid speaking engagements, things like that. Level four, you're running funnels, you're running technologies, you've got digital courses that you've got people buying or you've got a funnel suite and a, and a row of emails, right? And level five, you're doing live events kind of like what Pete, Dean and Tony are doing where they have the full background, they have the immersive experience they have all of the things that they need to build in order to be able to provide a client path that is as deep and as dedicated and as wide as they can reach they're doing this through affiliate marketing they're doing this through relationship building and the same thing comes with what we have to offer the same thing develops with 
what it is we get up to outside of just the business that we're in. We cultivate the relationships, we cultivate the community structure, we cultivate those engagement points beyond just the widget. And that's the most important thing, is how do you get your widget to serve the community? How do you get your videos to service the community? These are the things that we have to think about. So comment below. Talk about what you're up to. How do you serve your community with what level you're at, with what tier you're in, and what do you need to incorporate with that tier so that you can serve in a different way, in the same kind of capacity, but you're still being of service. So that's what I want to leave you with today, and I hope that that helps clarify some of the messaging around what you get up to, so that way we can link arms and we can create a chain that's stronger and indestructible, so that you don't have to worry about how you show up in the community. You just show up and you do your thing, and people learn to respect what you're doing, and then you get the relationships that come, and the benefits of those relationships as they grow in time. So it's not just about what you're doing now, it's about what you set up yesterday that leads into today that pays you tomorrow. Have a great night.